strong, flexible, secure. You can have confidence in Presto's GeoWeb Cellular Confinement System. And when properly installed, the GeoWeb system provides stable, aesthetically pleasing earth retention structures. The simplicity of installing Presto's GeoWeb system begins with the ease of unloading it. Sections are typically shipped from Presto, tri-folded on a pallet, and are easily offloaded with forked equipment. Retaining walls are constructed with the GeoWeb sections in one of two orientations. Walls where GeoWeb sections are oriented so the cell surfaces form the fascia are referred to as A-series walls. Colored face panels, such as tan or green, can be applied to GeoWeb sections for aesthetics in this series. Walls where the cell fins form the fascia are called B-series walls. B-series sections allow greater flexibility when making curves. Start by preparing the site to construction drawings. Prepare a smooth, even surface, removing any debris or vegetation and filling voids. As required, compact the subgrade before placing the wall footing. Excavate for the footing and, when specified, install a geotextile separation layer before placing any base material. Then place, shape, and compact the granular base materials according to specification. Fully expand the GeoWeb footing section into position with temporary or permanent anchors, stretching devices, or by other workable methods. Place the specified infill material in and around the footing section to a level about 50 millimeters or 2 inches above the cell wall. Level and compact the infill material using appropriate compaction equipment. If specified, place additional fill over the footing section to obtain the required elevation. Groundwater drainage can be critical to the performance of any wall system. Be sure a proper drainage system is installed. When expanding wall sections, use tools specifically dimensioned for each section size to hold the expanded GeoWeb section in shape prior to infilling. Use stretcher frames when wall faces are straight or have little curvature. Expand the GeoWeb section so the end cells are hooked over the frame bends. Next, invert the frame and position the section in place or next to an adjacent section. Use stretcher bars when the wall face curvature is more pronounced. Place the bar's front pin in the front cell and expand so the back pin is in the back cell of the same row. A stretcher bar should be placed in every row of cells. Once sections are in position, staple adjoining sections together. When curves are a part of the wall design, adjust the GeoWeb section to give the required curvature. When a specific angular deflection occurs, use tapered GeoWeb sections. Several methods work well for creating both inside and outside corners. One method to form inside corners is overlapping. Overlap two GeoWeb sections to create the desired angle. One section may need to be partially collapsed when the angles are greater than 90 degrees. The most common method used to form outside corners is wedge removal. Remove a wedge of material from the GeoWeb section equal to the angle of deflection. Be sure not to cut the fascia panel. Then join the two cut edges and staple them together to form the modified section. Once the GeoWeb sections are in position, you may begin infilling. First, place the infill material inside the GeoWeb section and then behind it to the excavation face or embankment limit. Overfill the cells and level to about 50 millimeters or 2 inches above the cell wall. Then remove the stretcher frame or stretcher bars, repeating the process for all adjacent sections. Use lighter compaction equipment to compact infill within the GeoWeb section. Then compact backfill materials directly behind the wall sections to specification. Heavy compaction equipment can be used to compact backfill materials to within one meter or three feet of the wall sections. Monitor the front face cell alignment between the compacted layer and layer beneath to determine if movement is occurring. If there is movement, compaction equipment may be too close or applying too much compactive pressure. 
After each level is compacted, remove excess materials so the tops of the GeoWeb cells are visible. When positioning subsequent layers, two alignments are important. First, maintain proper side-to-side -side cell alignment to prevent infill loss. Second, maintain the proper setback according to design. When the retaining wall is a geosynthetic reinforced structure, install the specified woven geotextile or geo grid between the geoweb layers at the specified elevations. Position the geosynthetic reinforcement so the leading edge is 100 to 150 millimeters or 4 to 6 inches from the front cells and extends horizontally into the compacted backfill area. Place and infill the next geoweb layer. Tension the reinforcement by pulling it back from the infilled wall sections. Finally, place backfill over the reinforcement and compact it. Infill and compact subsequent layers following the same procedure until the specified wall height is achieved. When a special fill, such as topsoil or concrete, is required in the front outer cells, several methods are used for infilling. One method is to cover the outer cells with boards. Place the boards over the stretcher bars during the filling of the back cells. Once the back cells are filled, remove the boards and fill the front cells with the specified infill. Then remove all stretcher bars. Another method uses a specially configured stretcher frame that allows the front cells to be covered during infilling of the back cells. After infilling, remove the stretcher frame. The front cells are now ready for infilling with the selected material. There are many workable techniques for constructing earth retention structures. Contact Presto or an authorized distributor for more information. From construction start to finish, Presto works with you to provide solutions to earth retention problems. Cost-effective solutions you can rely on. You can rely on Presto.